Maybe I start a video like All right. that. So we have a confession today. Oh boy. It might be our most shocking confession ever. Xander and I are fans of The Bachelor. Oh my God. <laughs> so a few years back, we started watching it and it's kind of one of our not so guilty pleasures because we refuse to be guilty about things that bring us pleasure. It brings us a lot to talk about <laughs> on YouTube, on Instagram. So yes, we kind of love The Bachelor, The Bachelorette, Bachelor in Paradise, all the crappy spinoffs that they have. I think I prefer Bachelor in Paradise. It actually is the best. It's the worst, so it's the best. Yeah. So that being said, we also want to fully acknowledge it is not a good show. Oh, at no, it's all. not. Um, and it reinforces so many bad, outdated, and just plain wrong stereotypes about love, sex, relationships, gender, people. It's a terrible show. Yeah. It's also incredibly problematic when it comes to issues of gender and race. So we just want to lay all that out there. We are not saying this is a good show but it's an entertaining one to watch. Definitely brings up a lot of stuff. So we know that the upcoming season of The Bachelorette is about to launch. So today we're gonna switch things up a little bit yeah. from what we usually do. And we are going to react to some of The Bachelor's steamiest scenes. Oh boy. So before we get started, if you're new here, then hello, we are Vanessa and Xander Marin. Vanessa's a sex therapist and we've been together for 13 years. And this is a very weird introduction to our channel. So please hang around and watch another video yeah, or two. Stick with it. Because <laughs> our account really is all about giving you the tools that you need to create an extraordinary relationship inside of the bedroom and out. Whether you watch The Bachelor or not. Exactly. So if you're looking for that a little entertainment on the side, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It really helps us so much to help our account grow. So let's talk about The Bachelor. The Bachelor does not have a very good history of depicting sex in a realistic no. or healthy way. Have you ever been to a fantasy suite? First question? <laughs> yeah. Probably not. There, It's brought up so many different issues. They've talked about virginity, there's been slut shaming, mm -hmm. there's talking about orgasms. So while the depictions are pretty bad, like at least it's giving us this opportunity to talk about a lot of these topics. Oh yeah. So we have rounded up some of The Bachelor's most shocking most shocking oh ever boy. sex scenes and we are going to watch them with you and share our reactions can't wait i'm still a virgin okay and what i'm assuming happens in fantasy suites um i guess i just want to know sort of what the expectations are are you saying you're worried about being intimate with becca okay so this is a very cringy scene but i have to acknowledge first of all for sure the producers made him do this. Like he would never actually ask Chris Harrison for advice on I don't what know. happens in he the He kind of worded suites. it like Chris Harrison, like tell me what you are expecting <laughs> me to do. <laughs> Also have to point out that Colton came out of the closet, which we are super, super excited for him for. Yeah. Way to live your truth, Colton. Go Colton. So I can understand, you know, the nervousness that he might have felt going oh, yeah. into this, feeling like I don't want to be having sex with a woman. Yeah. Sorry, Colton. I also want to say I'm really glad that they had Colton on this season, and I'm so thankful to him for being honest about being a virgin. I cannot imagine how challenging that must have been for him. I know he got a lot of crap for it, mm -hmm. but I'm so glad that he was willing to be that brave and honest about it because the truth is that there are so many more later in life versions than most people realize. So people are waiting later and later mm -hmm. to have sex these days. I mean, I've you know regularly worked with people who were virgins in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, beyond even. So I just want to normalize, like there are plenty of people who are later in life virgins. It doesn't say anything about you. We're giggling at this scene because it's so awkward and obviously very staged, but we're not giggling about being a later in life virgin because that is totally normal and cool. Yeah, so be like Colton, acknowledge what is going on for you, voice those fears. And like Chris Harrison said, like talk about what the expectations are. Like it doesn't have to be a certain way. It's totally fine to talk to your partner, the person that you're thinking about having sex with or uh, before a certain date or a trip or something and just be like, Hey, what are, what are, what do we want to do? What are the expectations? Like, or you, just like try to message Chris Harrison and ask him what the expectations yeah, are. Yeah, that always works too. Do you want to go back to my hotel and hang out for a bit? I know. 
Okay, so I remember watching this yeah. when it aired, and I believe that she was the first Bachelorette to ever acknowledge having sex with a contestant like openly, especially before the fantasy yeah. suite dates. And I remember watching it at the time and just being so excited mm -hmm. that she was talking about it openly and just... I think that she was pretty like unashamed about it. Just yeah. Like, yeah, we had good chemistry. I wanted to explore it. You know, this happened. Just like you would on a normal date. Mm-hmm. Um, I do remember her getting a ton of slut shaming about this, which oh, is sure. obviously ridiculous. We are not ever going to support anything like that. Yeah, happening. if we flip the genders in that, if, you know, if he were the bachelor, mm -hmm. would he be getting shamed for that? It would be like... Oh, yeah, he went off and had sex with her. Good for him. Yeah, so that was gross. What do you think about them just recording the door? The audio? The uh, audio. Well, well first of all, like, I mean, why is the camera guy, like, just in the room continuing to record have their you feet seen, away? Have you seen The Bachelor? No, That's... but they usually, like, close the door, and then they go away, and they let them have their privacy. Well, they were behind a closed door. It was just he was in the suite part of the room, and then they were in the bedroom. So there was a closed door. They maybe were mic'd up or, mm -hmm. you know, it's their job to get the shot. To make these steamy moments. Yeah, but I mean, honestly, what happened there is much more realistic. Like, that's like what happens in a real life date. So you've been on a couple yeah. dates with someone, you have a really good night, you don't want the fun to end, you go home and have sex. Like, nothing wrong with that. So what would be wrong with it in the context of The Bachelor? Exactly. earlier season i don't mm. remember too much about courtney i remember she was terrible i mean she was set up to be the classic villain um mm. and i think there was a lot of slut shaming of her for this like there were women mm. watching from the shore like watching what was going on mm. getting really upset with her but i'm kind of like you know what get it girl like you guys are enjoying each other having a little fun time in the ocean that being said we've got to clear up one thing sex in the water it's not very easy it's probably hard like it's hard to get proper lubrication because the water washes the natural lubrication it's away salt water yeah it's salt driving. water there's probably bacteria who knows not the best call around. yeah well maybe that's why it was only just the tip we'll see and you can't get any leverage either like you can just sort of like Pull your, especially if you're in the ocean. Yeah, it's not even like they're in a pool where they yeah. could be against the wall. Yeah, so probably not the most fun 20 seconds of time, but hey. No. Also, I assume zero protection because I did not see uh, yeah. anyone bring a condom into the ocean. He's like with running them. into the ocean with it. Yeah, and like, you know, who knows, who knows what their circumstances are. However, you're on a show with like 20 other women who are presumably going to be having sex with him too. I would say probably. Not the safest thing to do. Bachelor, let's let's see some more discussions of protection. I did hear, I read some sort of like behind the scenes thing from a producer that said that they do make sure the fantasy suites are stocked with condoms. So I'm glad mm. they do that. But like, it would be nice to get a little shot of a condom. Just to normalize like, yeah. hey, you know, we all need to keep ourselves safe and protect ourselves. Yeah, so. I'm actually surprised that Trojan does not sponsor The Bachelor. Ooh, idea. Are the year going to sit on his lap? Okay, so I'm so glad that The Bachelor never called me up and asked me to help do one of their sexy dates because every single one that I have seen is cringeworthy. I don't know who these people are. I feel so bad for them because probably the producers set everything up. They're probably but, actors. They're probably not actually professionals. Yeah, but these some of these dates are really bad. On the one hand, like I'm glad that they're trying to, you know, incorporate more sexuality and sensuality into the show and like help people push their comfort zones a little bit, but it's just so hard to do it in this really overly produced setup where there's cameras around, <laughs> there's tons of people. Like maybe if you were one on one in in a class with this teacher doing something like this like it could be sensual or yeah. interesting but my heart is gold but my vagine is platinum oh my god 
Okay. Wow, I forgot about this I one. Did too. It just makes me <laughs> like die inside a Karina little bit. It was kind of amazing. I mean, she was so ridiculous, so obviously going for the villain role. It was so obviously set up in that way. But like, for her to have that level of confidence in herself and just be like, you know, owning it, her sexuality, knowing her worth, I love it. At the same time, do you think that perhaps she's just watched a lot of movies and this is like what she thinks that men want to hear? Have you... I don't know, maybe. <laughs> I don't want to have sex with a platinum <laughs> vagina. Also, problem with platinum vagine too. I think what she's really referring to is her vulva. Yeah. So... Let's call it the right thing. Although she could have been talking about vagine, like about penetration. So who knows? We'll maybe maybe she knew more than we're giving her credit. Although I do see a little bit more of your point. It about, supports like, my argument. I think. I that do think that yeah. she has an idea of what she thinks that people want. What she thinks men want yes, in particular. Men, sorry. <laughs> or what she thinks other women on sure. The Bachelor do not want. <laughs> exactly. So who knows? Corinne's the only one who knows what her motivations are in her own relationship with her sexuality. But I think if she's coming from a place of like, this feels good, this is what I like doing, this is how I like interacting, go for her. If she feels like she had to do that to like make him interested in her or like make good scenes on reality TV, then that's a bummer. Yeah. Those dolls are kind of creepy. Hmm. After our talk tonight, I feel so good. Okay, so this wasn't a sex scene, but we had to include it because this definitely goes down as my favorite bachelor kiss moment of all time. Is it not weird though that they look in a window and there's obviously something kind of weird in there? <laughs> She's like, that's kind of creepy. And then he pins her against the wall and kisses her. Is that not a little weird? I didn't even, I knew it was coming, so I didn't even pay attention to what she was saying. It's just the pin against the wall. It's so seductive. He's got his hand in her hair. He's obviously mm. like a very just soft and sensual kisser. I mean, I'm into it. I think Ari was the best kisser that this show has ever seen. I think he might be leaning on his kissing a bit much because it didn't really seem like that hot of a moment. She's like, oh, there's something weird in that window. Oh, kiss. I don't care. It was hot. But I need to remind you of two things. Okay. <laughs> one, I've only been with one person. Okay. I just want you I to do keep very, that in your mind. I keep that in mind. I've kept it in mind. The second thing is that my last boyfriend, my ex, who I was intimate with, never made me orgasm. Lost for words? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I love this. I was mm -hmm. so freaking happy to see this scene. I think I remember like screaming <laughs> when I saw it. Because first of all, I just appreciate that she was so just open and honest, like talking yeah. about sex with him. Like she just put everything out there. She didn't say it in a way where she seemed like embarrassed or ashamed. She's just like, hey, just so you know, I want to make sure you know this. So telling him, you know, about her experience and then in particular about orgasm. I thought it was so great that she could just set those expectations, talk about it openly. The only little like quibble that I had with this scene is that she talks about like my last partner never made me yeah, orgasm. Yeah, I was going to say that. Exactly. And so if you have followed any of our orgasm content before, we have a ton of it. We'll put some links down below. But um, if you followed any of it, you probably have heard us say that we think it's so important for women to learn how to make themselves orgasm first before they orgasm with a partner. And we don't like to think of it as like your partner giving you an orgasm. Mm -hmm. We like to think that it's each person's responsibility to like take ownership of their own orgasm, know what makes their body work, be willing to give their body what it needs and be willing to like communicate their needs to a partner. But ultimately it's, it's you giving yourself an orgasm with your partner. Yeah. If we, if we perpetuate this idea that it is the partner's job or the man's job to, to make her orgasm, then it just creates this dynamic where men feel like there's a right way, there's a specific way to make someone orgasm. And the reality is every woman's body is different. Every woman requires different mm -hmm. type of stimulation, different things. And so when everyone's coming at it from the perspective like, oh yeah, I made this one person orgasm, so therefore I just do the same thing and everything's going to work, it's generally going to result in kind of a bad time for everyone. Mm -hmm. 
Some of the women have been giving me a hard time about kissing with my eyes open. But eye contact's a really big thing for me. These are hard to watch. <laughs> I don't know. There's something so I, I like. He says in the interview, like I don't know. I just thought like that's how you kiss, and like I don't want to shame anybody for for kissing or doing anything yeah. sex related in a certain way. But there is something really funny about just having your eyes like totally open the whole time. <laughs> I will say sometimes I just open my eyes for a second when we're kissing and I find Vanessa staring at me <laughs> and it's pretty funny. But it, it's, I like to it's sneak a, a peek. You just a, sneak a peek yeah. and you close your eyes it's again. It's an occasional, <laughs> it's an occasional occurrence. But yeah, I mean, it's funny if you think about it, like where did we learn that you're supposed to close your eyes when you kiss? I think it's really for movies and it's probably those teen movies where you go in for the kiss and like, Close your eyes like comically early. Two feet away. <laughs> yeah. I have had sex. <laughs> and honestly, Jesus still loves me. I know when now. And guess what? We did it a second time. You know what? Get it, Hannah. Get it, girl. Yeah, like Peter was so hot. They obviously had great <laughs> chemistry together. So it was really interesting to see her because she's like this Southern belle. They present her as like being a little mm -hmm. bit more traditional and conservative. And so I was really glad to see her just like go with what she wanted in the moment and be intimate with him and yeah. have a great time. Sound like they really enjoyed themselves in that windmill. So yeah. I'm always glad to see women talking about their sexuality, their desire openly and honestly, not feeling any shame. I love that she put Luke in his place for trying to make her feel bad about it. Like yeah. she had a great time. There's nothing for her to feel ashamed of. Yeah, because real life is not set up like The Bachelor. It's not like you have all of these awkward group dates and then all of a sudden one random day isn't it after you've met the parents, then you get a fantasy suite and it's like, that's the one acceptable time to have sex. No. That is not how real life works. So when you're feeling it, you're feeling it. And sometimes you got to do what you got to do. In a window. So that wraps up our video on The Bachelor's steamiest scenes. If you like this video, please give it a like. Hit that red button and subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the notification icon so you keep getting notified once we post new ones. And we have a free gift for you. If watching all these clips got you kind of excited about maybe trying some new things in the bedroom, <laughs> exploring a little bit more, you're definitely going to want to check out our free guide all about the 11 sex personality types. Mm. So just like we have these, you know, stereotypical types and roles in The Bachelor, we also have 11 sex personality types that we've come up with. So it's kind of like the zodiac of sex. Mm. It'll give you a ton of insight into what you're looking for in the bedroom, what your partner is looking for, how your types fit together. So we'll include a link to that down in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.